Hi everybody, today I'm going to be showing you and uh, I'm going to be demonstrating the Azure Data Factory. This will be an introduction class, so if you know Azure Data Factory, it may not be applicable for you, but I believe it's going to be really applicable for the folks who know SQL integration services and would like to move to Azure Data Factory. Uh, Azure Data Factory has been around for the last three four months this is 2015 to 2015 so I think it became public preview of in November 2014 so here's my first slide and here you see the Azure Data Factory and here you see the uh, SQL integration services the components of SQL integration services um, I'm going to go over each and every one of them and compare and contrast and we'll go from there First, in the Azure Data Factory world, we have link service, services. Uh, the corresponding item in the SQL world or integration services world is the connection managers. You have connection managers in, in SSIS, you have link services on the Azure Data Factory. You can think about it that way. <coughs> Sorry about that. In the SSIS world, we have all ADB sources like here, here, destinations. In the uh, Azure Data Factory, we have data sets or tables, they call. Here you can see uh, Azure Data Factory pipeline, and these two are my uh, data sets or tables. In the SQL world, we have transformations, like here, right in between. We have a derived column here. Uh, sometimes we just push the data end to end, but it's still a transformation, I would say. In the uh, Azure Data Factory world, we have pipelines in between. Now, the most striking difference between the SSIS world and the uh, Azure Data Factory is when it comes to scheduling. Uh, in the SQL world, or SSIS world, we have SQL agents jobs. Um, in the Azure Data Factory world, we have pipeline scheduling. Hence, um, it makes things a little bit interesting in the sense for each pipeline, you can think about this one as a pipeline, the output table is going to have a schedule. And you can have many output tables and many different schedules if you want to. Um, on the other hand, in, this, in an uh, SSIS world, you just have a package and you can call that package from a SQL agent and underneath that package there might be multiple uh, data flows, hence everything is based on a single, uh, um, a single timeline. Um, in Azure world, um, in Azure Data Factory world, it's not the case, hence it makes things a little bit interesting. Now I'm going to jump into my demonstration part and in order to do that I'll go over uh, to my portal portal.azure.com since um, this particular demonstration um, or Azure Data Factory is still in beta phase uh, you can access through it only portal.azure.com I don't know when they're going to release it to the public but I bet it's going to be in um, in a couple months Anyway, so I have, um, I'll close these guys so that I start from the beginning and go one by one. So I just click on Browse All from my home. I click on Home and Browse All. Here I have all my objects, all the available objects, and I'm going to click on Data Factories. And these are the data factories that I have created. And for this particular demonstration, I'll use the POC move data. This is the most basic one, um, but it shows uh, the individual components. So the most important thing in Azure Data Factory is we have the data sets over here and over here, and we have the pipeline in between. And in this pipeline, I can have one or more activities. Each activity, you can think about it as a transformation task. Hence, I have the data sets, I have link services, these are the uh, connection managers, and transformations you can see over here, and the diagram. Here's my diagram. So what it does is, this particular um, Azure Data Factory, it takes an Azure Blob Storage uh, data, a uh, blob, and then copies it 
and creates a new one with a different name. Uh, how do I know? Well, let's click on the pipeline task. Come on, here we go. And if I scroll down, you're going to see it's a copy from blob to blob, uh, copy active to task. And if I want to learn more about my data source, um, here's my table source. It's going to give me the JSON file associated with this uh, data source. And you can see the table definition or data set definition. And right here it tells you that the the table definition is based on Azure Blob location, which means this table is uh, a blob. And here's the file name, and here's the, the folder path, which is the container name that's associated with it. Um, and I also define the, the format of the file, that it is text format, uh, the delimiter semicolon, and here's another most important thing is it needs to use this particular link server to access to the to the blob service. Same way I define my output table here. I say these are the columns that I'm interested in even though I'm defining like this it's just going to ignore it but I just define it and the delimiter is semicolon and it's going to be text format and you need to put the file into raw data uh, with the name of hrtableoutput.csv. So let's run this task and then see what happens. How do I run it? It is quite easy. Um, these are my schedules. As you can see, I don't have any more schedules um, at this point. Um, they, these are called the slices. If I had then it would have been showing up here as well, but uh, what I can do is I can just double click on one of the schedules and run it. So in about a um, couple minutes, right now it's pending execution, uh, it's going to start and start um, to execute it. This is the initial raw data container and pretty soon I'm going to be copying this particular file to the same raw data at the root directory right here. So these two files are exactly the same, the identical. And it, it says it's still running but it's almost done. Um, so in about a minute or so it's going to be done. Now I'd like to show you how did I do it. Here's now let's start to look at uh, our uh, PowerShell file to create the Azure Data Factory. You can create the Azure Data Factory using two ways, two main ways. One of the ways is through PowerShell or you can go through the APIs. Unfortunately, the UI doesn't allow you to create um, Azure Data Factory components at this point. So I'm going to show you today the, the, the PowerShell way. Here I define my variables which include the resource group, data factory name, location, storage name, storage account name, cluster name, those type of things. Some of the, the variables are not necessary because I use them over and over again, hence um, they're all at the top of my PowerShell files. Here I define my subscription and then with the new Azure Data Factory uh, commandlet I create the, the data factory. Once the data factory is created I create my link servers here and I'll show you the, the link service JSON file it's like this, you define the name and then you define the type which is Azure Storage Link Service and then you need to define whether you want HTTP or HTTPS in this case HTTPS, the endpoint protocol you need to define the, the account name and the account key once that's done you need to define your uh, two inputs and output data sets and I'm going to show you the, the input one. This is how it looks like. The name of my uh, table. These are the, the columns in the table and their data types. The location of the table um, and the type of the, the location is an Azure Blob Storage. It's going to be 
inside of the raw data uh, container and here's the file name of the, the table if you want you can also define whether it's text format, what's the raw delimiter, what's the um, what's the column delimiter, what's the raw delimiter and also you, you have to define the, the link service to access to this particular table uh, the next thing we do the same thing for the other side which is the, the output table once it's done then we define the in between in other words the pipeline here's the pipeline definition um, it has got two things one of them is the input HR data table is the input and HR data table output is the output and we have the transformation as copy activity the type is copy activity right here and it accepts source and sync attributes and the source is a blob source and the sync is a blob sync that's about it and we define concurrency, retry, timeout, those type of stuff if needed to be once these are done the the last thing that we need to do is to schedule it once you do this one then you're good to go uh, you start to, to run your Azure Data Factory so and once you run it you are going to see this file and this file to be moved over to, to here as a copy and you are going to be able to see them uh, right over here as well right over here as a diagram I clicked on this particular icon and this showed up so if you guys have any questions comments let me know um, feel free to uh, suggest new topics to me in regards to BI, Azure, Azure Data Factory. I'll be going through a little bit deeper into Azure Data Factory and show you a little bit more um, in the upcoming sessions. Until then, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.